and welcome. This is Sahara playing Pillars of Eternity, The White March. We are in Brackenberry on the way to go see Lady Webb when we were confronted by this courier. Excuse me, but I've been looking for you. You're the one who lifted the curse on Heritage Hill. My lady, who wishes to remain anonymous, has entrusted me with bringing you this pistol. It belonged to a dear friend of hers who was lost to the curse. For your path in reclaiming Heritage Hill, my lady wishes you to have it here. May it serve you well in battle. Is this all? Um, no. Thank you. She bows. You are quite welcome. St. Graham's Spark. Now I must be off. Farewell. Okay. Hmm. Two-handed. Very slow. Something that... No, my... No, no, I might want. I don't know. Anyway, so let's go up here and see if we can talk to Lady Web, advance that quest, find out where, how we can get into, um, how we can get into the door, the cave, whatever. Um, oops, sorry, I need to go up the stairs, idiot. His name is Kana, not Canoe, Kana. I think she's over here. She's up here. All right, so please, hopefully you can help us. How fares your search? There's something I can tell you about the Latin Keys operations. Well, let's hear it. Um, no, no, damn it. You damn mustn't it. play with a woman's heart like that. Hmm. Yes? No. Damn. I didn't help. I didn't help at all. So I've got almost everything here done. To death's door. I'm into the runes. I'm able to find some indication of what the... Hmm. These are all companion quests, um, and these are below. Hmm. That we where the runes were at. Um, that's the place where the um, ruin is at that we were investigating. Hmm. So, and that's this one through death's door. Okay, so we're back in the area. This is the place. Okay. My big brother's last battle. I wish I could tell you what we're looking for. Okay, so we're back here where his brother died. Anything from the battle, I guess. Whatever 15 years of rain has him buried. He looks at you. You see my brother's ghost? You give me a holler, all right? He winks. Okay, so we're going to... Not much here. Gonna wander around. Oops, I suppose I should have my scouting on, huh? Time to see and not be seen. <laughs> Too recent. Too recent. I know there was a way we got. Okay, where am I at? I went the wrong way. Hey, something metal in the ground. 
Over by that boat. Over by the what? By the boat. I think I see... No. Never mind. <laughs> Nothing over here. I guess they cleaned up real good after the battle. Well, this is embarrassing. No, it's not. Blame me for trying to figure it out. Oh, there's somebody over here now. These ruins are claimed, friend. On your way. No need to get riled, boys. We're just passing by. Look at his talisman, Pag. Asian. How about that? A godless sack of shit. We got a blazing corpse worshiper on our hands. Oh boy. Actually, they never found the body. He opens his mouth to say something, then closes it. He quickly replaces his frown with a polite smile. Yeah. Hmm. The only reason for the legacy is because the Duke doesn't got the guts to see you all slaughtered. The gods want you dead. Me and Pag, though. We've done our part during the purges, didn't we, Pag? I bet. Seamstresses? Huh! <laughs> Make your cracks now. Got no god or homeland to avenge you. By Magrin, this'll be short work. Um... This has nothing to do with gods, just ignorance. You always swear by your gods when you do a devil's work? Yep. Mm -hmm. Doesn't matter who it was for anyway. Country's better for the purges. Maybe we start a new purge right here. Yeah, go ahead and try it, bucko. There's two of you against, uh, how many of us? Yeah. They were right. That was short work. Yeah, <laughs> we knew it would be. Anything here of, um, no, exceptional breastplate. You have anything to say? No, you don't. My thoughts will be as silent as my feet. Got it. Oh, wait a minute. There's something over here. The tip of some metal object protrudes from a mound of watery river silt. With both hands, you and Eater, Eder, Adair, begin digging in the mud until the object is dislodged. You close your hand around it and pull it from the wet earth. The object is a still semicircular frame about the size of your fist and even at even points around the semicircle jagged points jut out like tongues of flame the rays of a rising sun at the sun center is the carved silhouette of a borless plant i've seen these before they've topped the standards of ray and Ceres. or did when wide one was alive well it's something just not sure what it gets me do you think you can help us? Look, I appreciate you taking the initiative, but I don't think there is much chance that this nice stranger lady happens to be a cipher. The grieving mother looks at you. I will do what I can, but I will need the skill of your watcher to aid my own to identify the soul once I have found the traces. She turns to Eater, her hand outstretched. Eater hands her the still sun. The motion is mechanical, unconscious. The grieving mother takes the sun in one hand and yours in the other, and you can feel her presence in your mind, her thoughts bidding you to relax. Focus, she says, and the word rever reverberates as if through an endless chasm. 
You close your eyes and concentrate. The sun is bright in your mind's eye, warm with the pulse of collective experience and noisy with the thoughts of the past, of battle, of faith, of home. You drift from voice to voice, thought to thought, eaters so a vibrant signature with which to become with, with which to locate his brother. One voice stands out amidst the din, brassy and earnest, a shade brighter than eaters, but unmistakable unmistakably of the same con construction. You have no image of the owner, but his journey is imprinted within the points and curves of the still sun, and in your mind it opens before you as a path stretching both southward to Gilded Bell and northward over the uneven ter terrain that joins the Darewood to um, Medarius, whatever, I can never say that word. You trace the path back to his origin, far back as you can find gliding over plains and hillsides to a one-room home in Gilded Bell with a thatched roof and a dirt floor. The path is faint here, its distance in time rendering, rendering things blurry and details scarce. From Gilded Bell it follows a road toward Madmar Bridge, reaching the gates of Defiance Bay before diverting abruptly, cutting northward in a beeline for Raderas. The path leads to a Raderis city, regal and astir in the Adrian imperial style. It winds through streets and climbs a grand set of stairs into a stately building, passing through pointed archways into what appears to be a throne room. Upon the throne sits a man whose head is pure, blinding light, and as its gaze turns to you, the light drowns out all else. Its voice carries the force of thunder but its words are impossible to make out in the imprint echoes of echoes. The voice and light fade, and the path bends backward, carrying you along to a barracks, then back southward, marching into Deerwood and skirmishing, and skirmishing along the way. Upon one battlefield, the imprint is vivid, and you see a Redisarian standard topped with a still sun, clutched in the hands of a fallen soldier. You see a young man in armor with Eater's straw-colored hair race toward the standard and lift it, the path you've been following clear to see beneath his feet, and as his hand brushes the still tip, you can hear his thoughts racing in a blur, and they are of his God and his country, and a brother he hopes is far away from this place. In an instant, the thoughts are gone as well as the man, and the standard is passed to another soldier. You pick the path up again as it meanders south and disintegrates in the shadow of Cleobon Kling. You open your eyes. Anything? Looks like you were working real hard there. Your brother got as far as Defiance Bay before turning to Raderas instead. He met Wadwin there. Then he enlisted. Well, what did he talk about with Wadwin? Wadwin's head was a beam of light? I don't know. Wadwin said to have faith in him. Your brother agreed. No. Wadwin's head was a beam of light. I figured that. Wodin and me had heard enough stories from his uprising to know it wasn't just some tall tale. Doesn't mean he was Aethys. It could have been some wizard's trick. It's what they talked about that's important. What'd they say? I don't know. That's not funny. Come on. That metal sun. My brother touched it. You saw where he went. Now what'd he talk about with Widewin? Why'd my brother fight for Raid Saris? I wish I had something better to tell you. Are you deaf? I said, I don't know. Yeah, I wish I had something better to tell you. I don't know, I didn't hear. <sighs> I guess that's it. His mouth hangs open, his eyes glaze. His forehead creased between his eyebrows. He takes, he rakes his teeth over his lower lip. His voice is barely a whisper. We'll find some other way to know why he did what he did. I don't think we will. What will we do? Look for more war relics? We were lucky to find this one. The soldiers that fought with him were long dead. The battle was a massacre. Whatever Aethys knows, he's not talking to anyone. We don't have to wait around anymore. I got what I needed. Oh, I'm sorry. I am so sorry. If only there were words to fill such emptiness, better yet, to remove his doubt, his questions. I regret that my answers 
have only deepened his pain. So thus completed, fragments of his scattered faith. So his quest is done. I'm sorry you couldn't get resolution. I'm so sorry. Okay, so I think I must have missed something. Obviously. I mean, I missed several things. I missed the ogre. So we need to go back down. And I will pause. 